Colorado Avalanche have been outstanding on the power play in their first round series with the Winnipeg Jets, scoring two goals in games one, three, and four on the man advantage. The Avs six for 15 on the power play in this series in total. That'll be the first subject I talk about with our Winnipeg Bureau Chief, John Liu, who joins us from the 204 area code. John, great to see you. It's no secret that the penalty kill has not been effective for the Jets in this series so far, but there seems to be a bit of a disconnect, John, in the room about how to fix the issues. Take a listen to this. We had a good regular season against them, and, and you know, they made adjustments, and, you know, we, we haven't. So, um, you know, we got we to bring a different game come Tuesday. Well, first thing, you know, I have to stay out of the penalty box, and then the penalty kill has to do the job. Second thing, well, we have to start, stop turning the puck over. So... Uh, again, that, those things are self-inflicted. You want adjustments, stay out of the box, manage the puck better, and then go from there. Um, yeah. Look, you can understand frustration setting in for Rick Bonus, frustration setting in for Mark Shifley, but do you actually see a disconnect, Mark, between these two, between Mark Shifley and Rick Bonus, John, uh, as far as how to fix this penalty kill? Yeah, well, I see, I, I see uh, tangible evidence to support both sides, to be honest with you, Jay. Uh, when Mark Shifley says that the Avalanche have made adjustments from the regular season compared to now, he is absolutely correct because the Avalanche are a wagon right now compared to the team that the Jets swept during the regular season. Uh, they're faster, they're more aggressive on the uh, on the four check. They're much quicker through the neutral zone. They're killing the Jets in transition. So the, this is really like the best that the Avalanche have escalated to an nth degree over top of what the Jets faced during the regular season. So that's a fair point. When Mark Shifley says that the Jets have not adjusted to the regular season or to, to what the Avalanche have brought in this series, well, he's, he's correct too. Uh, we're not privy to what exactly the coaching staff have told the Jets to do, what they put on their whiteboards and X's and O's and on film. But the fact of the matter is what Rick Bonus is saying as far as being more disciplined about uh, trying to implement better puck management, these are all flaws in execution of the system. So whatever adjustments are being implemented by the coaching staff, they're not being executed uh, significantly by the players. But having said that, without knowing exactly what those adjustments are from an X's and O's standpoint, it's clear that the Avalanche are a step ahead of the Jets uh, in terms of tactics, but also in terms of execution, certainly in pace. So unless the Jets can get everything and everybody on the same page for Tuesday, well, you could have a very uncomfortable uh, repeat of history last season against uh, the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round where the Jets won the, se the series opener and then lost four straight. So they're up against that. They're trying to not let that happen again. And, you know, it's not often you have a nearly 20 goal scorer on the bench to start the postseason, but that's the situation Cole Perfetti found himself in going into this series. It's a deep forward group. There's no question about that, despite the fact they're struggling against Colorado. Do you think, though, some of the injuries that the Jets have been dealing with, John, might force Rick Bonus's hand and allow Perfetti to maybe get back into this lineup on Tuesday night and provide a little spark to this offense? Oh, absolutely, Jay. There could be some changes as a result of, well, resulting from necessity. Well, first of all, Brendan Dillon is questionable for Game 5. Uh, in Game 4, Logan Stanley drew in in his place. But having said that, I suspect that Colin Miller, who has not played in the postseason for the Jets, he only has a handful of games in the regular season since he was picked up at the trade deadline. He may draw in as the sixth defenseman. And on forward, that nasty shot to the head, that uh, to the side of the face that Vlad Nemesnikov took. Uh, questionable whether he'd be able to suit up for Tuesday as well and in that case it certainly opens the door for Perfetti to draw in now the thing with Perfetti though is that unless he's playing in a top six capacity it's questionable as to what his effectiveness can be because he's an offensive player he's not a defensive specialist defensive minded player having said that he is a pretty responsible forward uh, from in, in the defensive zone he's a very heady smart player but he's not overly fast, and he has zero experience in the NHL postseason. So he really would be thrown into the deep end of the pool, um, and it's undetermined where he may fit into the lineup. And we won't know tomorrow because the Jets are not practicing. They're taking a day off to regroup, rest up, uh, because the most important of the game is our most important game of the season is on Tuesday. So we're going to have to wait and see. 
whether Perfetti and what other changes are going to be implemented for Tuesday, Jay. All right, whatever changes are made, there's one thing that cannot change. Winnipeg still has to have the best playoff home crowd in the history of the National Hockey League. Everybody dressed in white, no more salmon. Let's get it together, Whiteout, because this team needs you Tuesday <laughs> night more than ever for Game 5. John Lou will be there, too, so you can say hi to John. John, you're the best. Thanks for this.